A Song of the Enchanting Wildwoods by Longchen Rabjang. I prostrate to my guru and the three jewels. Her form, a peaceful grove of fresh blossoms, pleasingly dappled with a soothing moonlight of compassion. The soul restful tonic for those long exhausted. I honour the miraculous wild woods, which I see now as if for the first time. Since I am broken-hearted here in the city of existence, my mind sends these tidings its own way. A story about resorting to the peaceful forest for someone who will apply their heart to the Dharma path. I see the truth that this life won't last and is swiftly heading toward ruin. That even this body, which I've so lavishly cared for, will be lost. And I'll have to head off alone to parts unknown. So now I'm off to the wild woods. When I get distracted, I lose sight of the path to freedom which is solely responsible for prolonging my samsaric suffering. Now that I've seen the plague of conceptual thinking, I'm off to live in the unborn peace of the wild woods. Busy cities are bonfires of desire. I see now that if I catch the terrible plague of existence, I'll just keep wandering in the canyons of Samsara. So I'm off right now to the wild woods. Every being in existence is threatened by affliction and totally bound by terrifying chains of duality. Because each one has at some point or another been my mother or father. To free them, 
and must go to the wild woods. All these outer things we keep looking to are impermanent and completely unreliable. Seeing how they change like autumn clouds, my heart knows I must go to the peaceful wild woods. The sun of the good times of yore has set, and the moon of mean people is on the rise. The darkness of evil doing Maras closes in on all sides. I see it, so I must go to the wild woods right now. People are so difficult to be with. The good ones won't lead the way, and the bad ones never stop. At the slightest provocation, their mood can shift unpredictably. No matter what I do, they're never satisfied. So I can't stay here. I'm going to the wild woods. If I don't take charge of my own mind, no one else is going to steer the course for me. If I'm really going to give the best counsel to my own mind, it's this. Don't stay here. You must go to the wild woods. Spending time with a spiritually immature diminishes my virtue and certainly makes me more negative. To make sure I'm totally engaged in the positive, from today on I must go to the wild woods. These days, when you spend time with somebody, you might make a quick friend, but at a moment's notice, they can become as unbearable as an enemy. Therefore, 
I can't stay. I'm going to the wild woods. Alas, even the light of the sage's teachings is drawing down upon the peaks of the western mountains. Once it has set, the lion's roar of the true Dharma will not be heard again. So I'm off to the wild woods. When explained well, nobody pays attention. Poor explanations contradict the true Dharma. Since beings prefer to believe that the Buddhas have taught only that they should do what they like and nothing else, when I teach the real Dharma way, Everyone reviles me like an enemy. For whatever reason, when they teach non-dharma these days, People love it, even though it sends them off to the lower realms. I simply can't understand what they're up to. Seeing all this, since I aim to accomplish the benefit of beings, I can't stay. I won't stay. I'm going to the wild woods. Even though your body is beautiful with discipline, you saw on the wings of the three trainings and you've plunged into the lotus lake of study and contemplation. If you aren't also wealthy, everyone just reviles and ignores you. The evil acting, irreligious rich are treated like gods. This is an age when fools are marketed better than the holy ones. Seeing these signs of the times, I'm off to the wild woods.
wherever I look. Apart from people putting their energy into the material world. Those practicing the Dharma path are as rare as a supernova. Having seen this to be true, if I'm going to accomplish the true Dharma, I can't stay any longer. I'm going to the wild woods. Compared to those who seek distraction with every thought, People who care for themselves according to the Dharma are altogether rare. Those who actually practice it are bullied and disregarded. Thus, I can't stay. I'm going to the wild woods. Even if you spend this life in introspection, it passes so quickly without pausing day or night. Having seen that laziness always gets the better of my virtue and that this mind won't settle even a little, I'm off to the wild woods right now. Because I'm distracted by the eight worldly concerns such as preferring praise to blame. Even though I live spiritually, it's all for this one life. So I can't stay. I'm going to the wild woods. All the good times I had until yesterday are now as real as last night's dream. Though sometimes they do become objects of pleasant nostalgia. Seeing how meaningless this is, I'm going to the wild woods. Even savouring my desires, I never feel content. All the pleasures that I've experienced from birth till now would not satisfy me, even if they returned. This mind is addicted to desire. If I'm not even securing this life's happiness in this way, how will I ever achieve the nirvana I seek 
which ensures benefit that lasts through all lives. So I'm done following the Desire Highway. Oh dear heart, we can do it. Let's abandon these desires and get to the Wildwoods. Since all this thinking hasn't done me much good, in order to grow accustomed to observing my own mind, I'm going today to the wild woods, where you, dear mind, will realize lasting happiness. Once I'm lying on my deathbed, I'll have to leave everything behind and travel on alone. This time is certain to arrive before long. So right now, I'm going to the Wildwoods. Because this time is incredibly degenerate, even if someone like me were to teach, it won't really benefit others. Because I aspire to be of benefit to future ages, I can't stay here. I'm going to meditate in the wild woods. Dismiss these preoccupations that are of no help to yourself and no help to others. You must, from today forth, go to the wildwoods to meditate on the nature of mind in order to accomplish what will definitely bring us benefit. But absolutely, I make the noble heartfelt aspiration that a time may come when I receive the opportunity to be of benefit to others. Accomplishing their needs on a vast scale without thinking of myself for even a moment. Now though, if I have one thought in my heart, it's this. Don't wait. Go meditate in the wild woods right now.
in order to encourage those below me to listen and especially uphold the Buddha Dharma. My primary concern will be the exchange of the essential teachings. This will spread the sage's doctrine and increase the intelligence of my own mind. Whatever I conceive of is impermanent and meaningless. Even the best conditioned things are bound to fall apart. Having seen this to be true, I will seek the sacred, undeceptive mind, the essential an indestructible truth. All the Dharma collections that the sage has taught come down to giving up desires and settling evenly in the peaceful truth, nothing else. O oh mind, consider your mortality and be intent to go to the wild woods. The wild woods have been universally praised by the victors. So they encourage anyone who has few desires and is rich in contentment to go live in the wild woods. Now when there's all this unstable thinking, the primary task is to settle mind inwardly, for it projects itself toward objects in the midst of many distractions. Unable to rest for even a moment, even if well guarded, it follows compulsively after emotions. Therefore, I can't stay here. I'm going to meditate in the wild woods. Intellectually understanding phenomena's nature and leaving them as mere objects of mindfulness is no help. So if I'm going to become intimate with the true nature of phenomena, I can't wait. I must go to the wild woods.
The wilds naturally entail few distractions and obligations and are free from the suffering of anxiety and adversity. So today, be happy, go to the peaceful wild woods, which far surpass the joys of the cities of the higher realms. Well, my dear mind, listen now to the charms of the wild woods. Precious trees, fit to offer to the victors, abound there. Branches laden with fruit, their leaves and flowers fragrant and blossoming graced with the scent of incense and mist on the breeze. Cascades of water descend with the gentle rumble of bass drums. The hills above are bathed in the coolness of the moon and covered with a thick robe of clouds, above which shine the stars and constellations in their perfect beauty. Flocks of geese glide above fresh smelling ponds and birds and deer roam freely about. Bees buzz melodiously everywhere among the lotus and upala flowers, among the wish-fulfilling trees. The trees sway, dancing back and forth, back and forth. And the tips of their branches bow, as if lovingly welcoming guests, saying, We're glad you've come. Cool, pure ponds are covered with lotus flowers, whose faces are bright as if smiling upon us. Surrounding are groves of flowers and trees, and grassy meadows holding the robes of the sky. All of this shining like the stars on a clear night, or gods playing in pleasure groves.
while the cuckoo sings his intoxicating, piercing song, and the flowers sway in the cool seasonal breeze. Cloud elephants trumpet their joy, and the appearance of rain heralds cooling goodness. In all four seasons, guiltless subsistence can be had from readily available fruit, leaves and roots. In the woods, the afflictions naturally subside, for there is no one to say unpleasant things. Having gone far from busy cities, in the woods, peaceful meditation naturally grows. In the woods, the mind is tamed as it conforms to the true Dharma. And one can find the bliss of inner peace. In short, the charms of the wild woods are endless. Even if I had eons, I could not conclusively extol them. The attainment of awakening by all the victors of the three times only occurs when staying in the wild woods, never in stressful cities and countries. Offering flowers and incense to all the Buddhas for eons as numerous as the grains of sand in the Ganges would bring but a fraction of the merit gained from taking seven steps in the direction of retreat with the qualities of the wild woods in one's mind I encourage you thus to contemplate the qualities of the woods as detailed in the Moon Lamp Sutra. Once you've gone there, you'll live near caves and cliffs in areas rich with medicinal herbs, amidst flowers and trees, or in a simple thatched hut made of grass and leaves. You'll sustain yourself with the bare necessities, such as water, kindling and fruit and have the space to apply yourself day and night to what is wholesome. There, inspired by the turning of the leaves, you'll realize with certainty that beauty, health and various abilities all gradually change, that they lack solidity. What is called the diminishing of one's assets.
there, inspired by the falling of the leaves, you realize with certainty that friends, strangers, and even your own body are such that they separate. Even if they are together now, for the moment, what is called the reality of loss. There, inspired by the pond losing its lotus flowers, you realize with certainty that all wealth, assets and sensual objects are in the end changeable, lacking solidity. What is called the exhaustion of what is amassed. There, inspired by the passing of the months and seasons, you realize with certainty that even this body, like the blooming flowers of late spring, changes with time, its youth passing. What is called the arrival of the Lord of Death. There, inspired by the ripening and falling of fruit, you'll realize with certainty that youth, the prime of life, and old age are just so. That there's no certainty of when death will occur. What is called what is born is bound to die. inspired by reflections appearing in ponds, you'll realize with certainty that as the diverse range of phenomena appear, they lack inherent nature, just like illusions, mirages, or reflections of the moon in water. What is called empty of true existence.
Having thus internalised the nature of all that is, sit upright on a comfortable seat with the body at ease and cultivate bodhicitta, concerned with the needs of beings. Don't dwell on the past or fantasize about the future. Don't engineer this natural, ongoing presence. Don't direct the mind or draw it within. Just let it settle without distraction. Resting without grasping or conceptually structuring this open clarity that is vivid, quiet, lucid, illuminating. This is the wisdom intent of the Buddhas of the three times. Other than settling, easily relaxed in the innate experience of the way your mind abides. There's nothing you need to contemplate. So you can release the effort it takes to engineer it. For it is not an object of conceptual elaboration. It can't be conceived of or investigated. Yet, it is the wisdom intent of all the Buddhas. Therefore, to quiet the tangled mess of thought, all you need to do is look into the intimately peaceful nature of mind. At the end of the session, dedicate without reifying the three spheres. In between sessions, Cultivate your appreciation of impermanence and death. Conditioned things have no attainable essence and are rife with problems. Consider how samsara's nature is also like this. Once you have realized how the play of all external appearance are like dreams or illusions. Let everything be within the equality of the experiential dimension of space. Don't affirm or reject anything. Give up attempting to engineer experience. 
by living in this fashion. Anything that happens will help reveal the unborn and unceasing nature of mind. Your innate nature, just as it is. Also, at night, when it's time to sleep, release your mind into a conceptually unstructured experience within the reality of its unborn nature. When you wake and appearances dawn, repeatedly relate to them as being ineffable by nature, like illusions. Once you have seen this precious treasury of your mind's nature to be such that nothing need be added or removed. You will cross the painful ocean of existence to the simple experience of that which is eternally peaceful and entails no suffering. arriving at the boundless state of Buddhahood. In the meantime, Consider the magical play of concepts that occur as the natural arising of your essence, to which you need not grasp. Thoughts arise as the display of Dharmakaya's essence. appearances occur as you are up and about. Think, I will guide these beings. May I be their protector, refuge and friend. Once you have entrusted your mind to Bodhicitta, bear in mind that your conduct should ideally be pure. You needn't think about anything other than the needs of beings. This is the miraculous tree of compassion, which nourishes the shoots of the omniscient victors. This path surpasses the Shravikas and Pracheka Buddhas, for it is a great lake of innumerable qualities from which the light of immeasurable compassion spreads. The incredible source of the precious state of perfect Buddhahood. Nothing could be more incredible than this. Thus, anyone who is wise should definitely go meditate in the wild woods. 
to accomplish sublime and peaceful awakening. If in this way I do not accomplish the Dharma now, later, who knows what direction I'll head in and how difficult it will be to reconnect with the path at that point. Then there will be nothing I can do. So now, while I have the chance, I must apply myself to the Dharma. Nobody knows for sure whether they will die today or tomorrow. Nothing is totally reliable. The Lord of Death is drawing ever nearer and I have no power to send him back. So quickly, quickly, I'm off to meditate in the wild woods. When death comes, none of our wealth, friends or relatives will be of any help to us. A real practitioner will have nothing to fear of death. So let death come quickly here. I'm going to the wild woods. It won't be long before everyone, everything, and I will all be gone. This is certain to come to pass. So I can accomplish a bit of the Dharma now. I'm definitely going to live in the wild woods. Those who live an ethically impeccable life with abundant study, good meditation, life in the wild woods and training in what is virtuous shall fearlessly discover great joy in the face of death. The cause of their joy is exactly life in the wilds. Thus, I am leaving to meditate there. Nobody could know for certain if the time when I shall be no more will come tomorrow or not. On the morning of my death, Nothing will protect me other than the Dharma. For the Dharma is my protector, my home and my friend. It points me to the fine manner of the higher realms.
thus mind remember that death is coming I must go to live in the wild woods for the love of Dharma sent this letter to itself. Mind, if you're listening, you are fortunate in the Dharma. This message, spoken for your benefit, came straight from the heart. Mind, take it and head to the wild woods. This song of the enchanting wildwoods was penned by the man from Samye, whose mind was turned to liberation by renunciation on the highest mountain peak of being at ease in the nature of mind. So he would wholeheartedly head to the wild woods. Through any virtue arisen from this, may all beings extract their minds from the city of samsara and find freedom all together in the enchanting wildwoods of omniscient liberation.